Hello. Considering today is Valentine's Day, I wanted to take the time to pay tribute to something that I hold dear to my heart. Growing up in the 2000s, my generation of kids was the first to navigate the internet we know today. We got to explore the vast jungles of YouTube, Google, the iPhone, and all of this stuff for the first time. And for us, we were the first to have this technology ingrained into our brains from the get-go. For the first time in human history, everyday life became bionic. And I find it fitting that the toy line that defined those childhoods was also a bionic chronicle. Bionicle. When you look at a toy line and why it's successful, there's usually some unique gimmick that it's fun to play with that makes it stand out. It might be easy to write off Bionicle's success because it's a buildable toy action figure with play features and that also allows kids to customize and create their own characters. But those elements are not what defined the toy line that saved LEGO from bankruptcy. The key ingredient that made it special was its storytelling. Six canisters land on a mysterious island, and from them emerge six elemental heroes. Half machine, half organism, and would set on a quest to save the island from corruption. What LEGO did with that simple concept was create a world with their online games and animations that perfectly captures that childhood feeling of awe and angst. Even the commercials they made were packed with atmosphere. Never would you think watching a kid's toy commercial would make you feel claustrophobic or disgusted, but here it is. As a kid, I remember watching the end of this commercial and being like, holy shit, the island is alive. Bionicle even had its own line of tie-in books and comics, which gave more depth to the story. It was spearheaded by this man, Greg Farshti. It was this man who made Bionicle an allegory for fighting cancer. I'm not joking. See these canisters that arrive to the island? Doesn't their shape remind you of something? Ah yes, pills. And what do these canisters contain? The heroes of the story, which are the cure to the corruption spreading across the island. And oh yeah, remember that commercial? The island is literally a head. It's a person who's sick. In light of making this video, I got all of my old Bionicles out of my attic. As a kid, for whatever reason, I really liked this Bionicle, the Toa of Stone Pohatsu, and I have every version of him from 2001 to 2016. It's cool to see how the series evolved over the years. But what's really cool to see is this first one. For just $6.99 at the time, you got the figure to build, this little ball, you get the container from the story, and the container doubles as an actual Lego piece for you to display the masks of the series. And on top of that, each of these Toa sets came with a poster. After its cancellation in 2009, Bionicle got a reboot in 2015. And even though these newer figures are actually pretty cool, it's easy to see why the reboot of this series failed. It has none of the grunge or mystery that defined the original. But why does this matter? Why am I talking about Lego Bionicle on Valentine's Day? Well, first of all, it's because I'm a loser and I'm lonely. But also it's because I think there is something so unique and magical about Bionicle. It's a bookmark of the 2000s and a personal staple in my childhood. I hope that future generations get their own magical, unique experience like I did. So I thought I'd make this kind of epilogue because while making this video, LEGO released a new Bionicle set for the first time in seven years. But it's a gift set and you have to spend $100 to get it and it's not even uh, technic. Um, but it's kind of cool uh, to see that LEGO is in any way trying to pay homage to uh, this thing that was so special to so many people. And what's really cool is in the set, there's a message from the man himself, Greg Farsty. In it he says, 
Thank you to the legions of fans who have kept the spirit of Bionicle alive for more than 20 years. It's the passion and creativity of the fans of all ages that ensure the legends of the Toa will always live on. Well, Greg, you're welcome. But more importantly, thank you. Thank you for helping make this silly little toy line be so special and fun.